like to welcome you tonight to our service. Everybody grab a seat. Hey, my brother. How are you? You okay? You got everything? It's good for brethren to dwell together in unity, the scriptures say. Brothers and sisters coming together as the community of faith. And uh, make sure you have a Bible. Make sure you have some sermon notes to join us as we go through the scriptures tonight. Sunday school song. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, yes that's, that's the, the book, book for me. me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, what does that stand for? Bible. Bible, God's Bible. word. I stand alone on the word of God, Amen. the yes. B-I-B-L-E. That's our foundation. Our Thank firm you, foundation God. is God's Word. Hallelujah. So it's great to see you here tonight and those joining us online. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Jesus, thank you for your love for us. Amen. Every person here in this room, Lord. We thank you for um, just the way that you work in our lives. God, uh, <clears throat> divine appointments that you bring into our lives every week, every day, Lord. May we just be alert and not deceived by Satan, who is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. May we have open hearts and open ears to hear your word. You're a good God, a good Father. Amen. 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 Thank you for your son. Sending your son to be a offering for our sins on the cross that bought us with the price of his blood. We worship you. We adore you. We ask you to fill this room with your presence. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. Let's worship the Lord together. Have you noticed uh, last few weeks, Dave's been uh, auditioning for worship leader there? Leading songs, man. I got news for him. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, perfect, pour out your spirit in love, as we cry, holy, holy. Open the eyes of our hearts tonight, Lord. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. As we cry, holy, holy, now let's worship the Lord, His holiness. Holy, 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 I want to see holy, 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 holy,
to see you high and lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we cry holy, holy, holy. Give them all you got. Come on. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. on high, the King of Kings. We are here to exalt his name and bless him forever because he alone deserves it. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how how great, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how The splendor of a king. The splendor of a king. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth be joined. All the earth be joined. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Come on, sing with me How great is our God And all will see how How great, how great, how great Splendor of a king. The splendor of the king. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice. He trembling, he trembles at his voice. How great is our God! How great is our God! And all will see 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. How great, how great, how great. Yeah, oh, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is the name of all names, worthy of all praise. Name of on this song. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He love is strong and his grace is free. Good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah, 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 and he makes a way, he makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave, ain't no sinner that he can't save, 
Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Amen! Amen! Yeah! Hallelujah! 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 Amen! Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause your shame done all it's stealing. Are you desperate for some healing? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free. And the good news is, I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Anybody in here that Jesus changed their life? Woo! Woo! He did it for me. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame I see the old has passed away The new has come Now I have resurrection power Living on the inside Jesus You have given me No longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. I'm dressed in your royalty. I'm dressed in your royalty. Your Holy Spirit lives in me. I see my past and fear. The new has come. Now I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom. No longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness. You have given us we're dressed in his royalty. I'm dressed in your royalty. Your Holy Spirit lives in me. I see my past has been redeemed. The new, the new has come. Resurrection power Living on the inside Jesus You have given us freedom No longer Bound by sin and darkness Living in the light of your goodness You have given us freedom 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 You have given us freedom 
you have given us freedom. My chains are gone. Freedom, you have given us. Freedom. Hallelujah. You have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Freedom. Freedom, you have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. My chains are gone, gone, gone. Freedom, you have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I have resurrection power living on the inside Jesus. You have given us freedom. I'm no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. Freedom. Thank God that he's given us freedom, right? Amen. Freedom from sin. We are no longer in bondage Amen. to Satan. Freedom from death. We have been set free Glory to his name. by what Jesus did for us on the cross. Glory. Praise Amen. God for that, huh? Praise God. Every one of us have a testimony about how Jesus redeems us and sets us free. Blood of the Lamb. Amen. So it's great to see everybody here tonight. A couple announcements. Uh, this... Uh, our regular Tuesday night men's or uh, Bible study or Wednesday night men's or woman <laughs> regular Bible study Thursday night women's Bible study this week okay at 6:30 don't forget that women and then uh, Friday night we're having that great film Left Behind the World at War so from the Book of Revelation what's going to happen those last three years and you can see all the nations lining up for it man. China, no restraints anymore. Pretty soon they'll take over Taiwan. Iran having their nuclear weapons. You know, Afghanistan and the terrorists and everything else that's going on there. Man, it's getting ready. So this is a great movie. Bring your friends, um, especially those that don't know Jesus, right? Amen. And then coming up uh, November 14th, we have the senior uh, luncheon here. Don't forget that. And, uh, you know, there's, I mean, God's doing a great work. We gave Praise over 8,000 pounds of food out today. Thank you, Jesus. 8,000 pounds. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we had a lot of faithful workers. Um, God bless them all. You know, it was great just to see, you know, no pride, no, amen. you know, just everybody working together. Good spirit, amen. And uh, God just did a great work. It was amazing because a lot of people were saying, you know what? I did not have any food at all today. And then we come along with food. Praise the Lord. And uh, we went to the trailer parts. We went to the Amen. hitching post. We had drive through here from 10 to uh, 12. And almost a full time, just cars just kept coming up, Praise coming up. And we tried to pray with everybody. Yeah. And uh, amazing how many people were receptive just to being prayed for. Yes, so that's just a Amen. movement of God, you know, that God's Amen. doing a great movement. And it's just like I was telling the group this morning, you know, it talks about giving a cup of cold water in his name. Well, we gave a bag of food or a couple boxes of food or whatever. And, you know, just that act of kindness is it's going to be remembered by those people. Yes. And, uh, you know, we were telling them we have a, you know, food bank here, you know, during all the services they can come and, and get food and you know during the week if they need it and uh you know some people were saying oh yeah the church hey, amen. i need to come and check it out you know and oh, yeah. and so that amen. was great we never know amen, amen. never know you know how just using a little hospitality is going to minister to people so let's have the ushers come forward we'll um, just receive the tithes and the offerings as we worship the lord through our faithful giving and God is so good. He's taken care of us for so many years. And just week by week, he does it. So he just puts it on people's hearts, and God provides. So, Lord, just thank you that you provide for all of us, Lord. And 
Maybe we're down to the last dollar. Maybe we're down to, you know, we don't know if we have a job next week, with everything that's going on, but we love you, Lord, and we know that you'll never leave us and never forsake us. You're always there right for us, Lord. And uh, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for forgiveness in our lives. God, you're doing a great work. You want to use your people to be a part of that. You want them to receive blessing from just being used by you. May we have a lot of servants here in this church. Bless them all. A lot of servants. So we love you tonight, Lord, and thank you for the worship team, and thank you for the ushers and sound people and Sunday school teachers and so many food workers that were here, food servers. and. God, may you get the honor and the glory and the praise. And may we just be a, a light, a little light on El Cajon Boulevard where people know that they can come and, and be accepted, Lord, and offered the free gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Inside the mystery, see the empty cross, see the risen Savior, victorious and strong. No one else above him, none is strong to say. He alone has conquered. Inside the mystery, see the empty cross. Look inside the mystery, see the empty cross. See the risen Savior, victorious and strong. No one else above you. Not as strong to say, be alone as conquered the power of the grave. Glory, my eyes shall see the glory. 
Take out your sermon notes. Anybody here experience any trials of tribulation or persecution this last week? A few of us, right? Well, we've gone through the book of Acts, and we've come to Acts chapter 8, the persecuted church, brothers and sisters in the Lord, and then they are moving out by the persecution. And, uh, you know, at first glance... We think about Stephen's death, and uh, why God? You ever ask that why God question? Why God? I don't understand. Why this persecution? Why these trials? Why did you kill Stephen? I mean, he was powerful in your service. He, he did, was miraculous, did miraculous miracles. He was a preacher of righteousness. He had godly character. He was an amazing servant. Why God? We're going to see why when we get to Acts chapter 8. Killed because he was preaching Jesus. And um, persecution of the church led to the church moving out of Jerusalem. And uh, here's a great verse for us. Turn to Genesis chapter 50, verse 50. This is a good verse for all of us as we go through trials and tribulations and persecution in our lives. Genesis chapter 50, verse 50. Or verse 20. <laughs> right. Thank you. It says this. As for you, talking Joseph, talking to his brothers, it says, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. You meant evil, but God meant it for good. In order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. You know, after all the trials that Joseph went through, you know, at the end of his life, you know, he's seeing that how God used that to preserve the Jewish nation, really preserve them alive. And uh, not one of us know how long we have to live. We don't know. I mean, you know, the average lifespan in biblical days was in their 40s. And here we are today, you know, many over 50, 60 years old. And, you know, we're facing cancer. We're facing, you know, illness, all kinds of things in our lives. We're not guaranteed another day on this earth. So as long as we're here... God says, just like Joseph, glorify me, Joseph. Like Tell the person next to you, you may not have long to live. <laughs> that sounds kind of boring and, and depressing. <laughs> but as long as we have another day, God says to glorify him. And that's what Stephen was doing. He was glorifying the Lord in his life until that day that it was time to go home. And uh, turn to John chapter 15, verse 20. John 15, 
John chapter 15, verse 20. Got it. Remember the word that I said to you. Here's Jesus talking. It should be red letter edition if you have red letter edition. Remember the word that I said to you. A slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. They don't know Jesus. So the persecution and the trials of tribulation are going to come. And then it says, if I have not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. Now they have no excuse for sin. Tell the person next to you, there's no excuse for your sin. John chapter 16, verse 8. John 16, verse 8. And when he comes, notice he is capitalized in your Bibles, right? The he that he's talking about is the Holy Spirit here. When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin. Remember, they're without excuse. And righteousness and judgment concerning sin. Why? Because they do not believe in me. You ever talk to people that believe in all kinds of things, but they don't believe in Jesus? And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, you'll no longer behold me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged. He's already been judged. His doom is certain. Just read the book of Revelation. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. First Timothy chapter one. Verse thirteen. My Bible's getting so old the pages are hard to turn. <laughs> First Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 13 says, Even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. Who's talking there? Paul. Paul. I was all these things, right? And then he says, And yet I was shown mercy. Now you might be somewhere in that list or... You know, the list goes on, and he talks about all kinds of other things. You know, um, godliest, godless people that he talks about there. And even kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching. Uh, You know, that's what Paul was. I mean, he was a persecutor of the church and a violent aggressor. He says, and yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus was more than abundant with faith and love, which are found where? In Christ Jesus. So, he says now it's a trustworthy statement. Fact. This is a fact. Trustworthy statement. Deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners. And then he says, among whom I was foremost of all. Can Jesus forgive sinners? Yes, he can. Look at all those things he's being, that are, he's describing there. And then turn to the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 5. Philippians, chapter 3, verse 5. Here's Paul's credentials. If anybody had godly credentials, it was Paul. He says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. And as to the law, he was a Pharisee. 
There's a lot of Pharisees in churches today. <laughs> Tell them like it is. And as to zeal, he says, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness, which is in the law, I was found blameless. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as loss. For the sake of Jesus Christ. More than that, verse 8, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Man, we get a, he says the surpassing value. We get, we put a lot of things in the way of that. A lot of things. He says this is the surpassing value. Every these All these things were lost. In the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them but rubbish. Man, Will, Will and I, we just wait for Thursday afternoons because the trash truck comes on Thursday afternoons. And all the rubbish is taken away. It's, you know, sometimes we wonder if they're going to take it because it's the trash bin out there is filled so high. And we're, I mean, Will's out there on his knees. Please take it, take it, take it all. And they take it all, you know, and get rid of it all. It's all but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Now go to Acts. Let's get into the book of Acts. Here was last week. Turn to Acts chapter 7, verse 58. It says, verse 57, the the people that were listening to this great sermon of, of Stephen, it says... They cried out with a loud voice, and they covered their ears, and they rushed upon him with one impulse. Man, they did not like what Stephen had to say. And then it says, And when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. After he was... Pablo? That's Saul? No, that's Paul. After he was he had a divine appointment with Jesus, his name was changed to Saul, right? But right now, all the garments of those that were stoning Stephen and all the message, he heard it all. He saw everything. And it says they went on stoning Stephen as he called upon the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And having said that, he fell asleep, he died. So here's, now we read some scriptures about Saul and about how he would drag men and women and children out of their houses and would imprison them and would persecute them. And he thought he was doing God a favor. God, I'm I'm doing you a favor. I'm getting rid rid of these Christian people. The way. Getting rid of them that believe in Jesus. And he was actually persecuting Jesus when Jesus met him. Why are you persecuting me, Saul? In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, talking to the apostles, and there was the 12, but there was over 70. There was probably many more disciples of Jesus at that time. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. All of us should have a testimony. A testimony of what Jesus has done in our lives. You shall be my witnesses. Now they thought, well, we'll be your witnesses here in Jerusalem. 
And God said, no, I got other ideas. You shall be my witnesses in the trailer parks, in the hitching post, in National City, in Chula Vista, in La Mesa, Lakeside, Santee. You shall be my witnesses. And he, so he says, not just in Jerusalem, but in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Now, the temple was in Jerusalem. It was the happening spot to be. Hey, Jerusalem, man, it was the center of all the spiritual activity. For six years, they stayed in Jerusalem. They didn't want to leave. So God used the stoning of Stephen to move them out. It took persecution of the church to move them out to all these other areas. To be obedient, as Acts chapter 1, 8 told them to do. What does it take for us to change our lives? To have a passion for God, to be on fire for God. What trial, what tribulation, what suffering might it take? You know, in our day and age, might it take a pink slip? You get a pink slip next week. Some guy told us today that he needed food and because... He doesn't have a job as of November 1st. You know, we'll take a pink slip. We'll take a job transfer. You know, we'll take a, a, a broken romance. We'll take a sickness. You know, Stephanie's son-in-law uh, has been in the intensive care ward for three weeks in Menifee with COVID. And they did an experimental drug on him, and he's been on the oxygen and everything else for three weeks. He was to the point of death. His, his blood pressure went down into the 60s many times. He could have, that could have been it. And uh, he, he didn't have the COVID tests, and, and the doctor said, hey, you're probably going to die. If you don't start, you know, exercising and, you know, moving around, doing the things that I'm telling you to do, you're probably going to die. You know, and, and now he's getting better. He's a servant of the Lord, and he's, you know, going to be going to uh, the next phase, uh, acute center. But it, he was close. He was ready to go see the Lord. So what will it take? You know, perhaps you would rather stay where you're at, do what you're doing, you know, the drugs, the alcohol, the addictions, whatever it may be. And the Lord is going to get a hold of you because if you accepted him at one time, time in your life, he's going to convict you of sin yes, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he does. Lead you in righteousness, obedience. Thank you, Jesus. And so what, it take, what will it take for us to trust him, yes, to believe in him? In Acts chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Saul was in hearty agreement with putting Stephen to death. He's cheering it on. Yay! Put him to death! Get rid of these Christian people. And it says, on, on that day, a great persecution arose against the church. Now, it's happening all over the world, not just Jerusalem, but all over the world. And they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles and some devout men who buried Stephen, and they made a loud lamentation over him. But Saul began doing what? Ravaging the church. He, I mean, he, he was so mad, he lost all sense of sanity. You know, he was going house to house imprisoning believers, committing them to their deaths. He, he was tearing the church apart. And uh, look at Acts chapter 22, verse 4. Acts 22, verse 4, and it says, And I persecuted the way to the death, binding and putting both men and women into prison. Binding them. Put them in, into prison. And then Acts 26, verse 11. It 
it says, and I punished them. I punished them often in all the synagogues. And I tried to force them to blasphemy. You know, you can imagine, you've seen movies of, of American prisoners in different prisons and, and being beaten and tortured so that they would, you know, deny that America and Christians being beaten and tortured so that they would just deny the faith. Tried to force them to blasphemy and, and being furiously enraged at them, I, per, I kept pursuing them even to form, for, foreign cities. And while thus engaged, I was journeying to Damascus with the authority of the commission of the high priest. And at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven, Hallelujah. brighter than the sun, Praise shining all Lord. around me and those Praise who were journeying with me. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in Hebrew dialect, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, who art thou? Lord, who art thou? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting. And from that time on, his life entirely changed. Go back to Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, those who had been scattered went about. Now, they weren't just scattered. It said they went about doing what? Don't forget this. Preaching the word. They went about preaching the word. They didn't stop preaching the word. Even in Rome, you know, when they were being hung on trees and lit on fire and taken to the Colosseum and thousands of Christians put to death by all kinds of just terrible means, they kept singing, they kept preaching the word, they kept praying. They didn't deny Jesus. tragedy what happened to him what's happening to Christians all over the world today and so are we ready you know the persecution is coming the trials and tribulations are coming it says in the believers were running from Saul running from his posse but they kept preaching about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Man, I, I was thinking how, you know, when there's a big fire, the sparks are flying. Well, the gospel sparks were flying everywhere. Amen. Lighting on fire other people's Hallelujah. lives, right? Hallelujah. Amen. They weren't cowering somewhere, you know, just, but they were preaching. They had, they had such a zeal. They had such a passion. Jesus they couldn't stop them they just were going everywhere and it says in verse 5 not only did Stephen do miracles there's another guy that God raised up Philip and it says in verse 5 Philip went down now here's a no-no if you were Jew to the city of Samaria the Jews hated the Samaritans they thought the Samaritans were half-breeds, and they, they went back when they needed their help, and they wouldn't give their help back in the book of Kings. And, you know, so here they went to the city of Samaria. God used him to go to Samarita, Samari, Samaria, and they began doing what? Proclaiming Christ to them. You know, one of the deacons in, in Acts chapter 6, not only was Stephen, but uh, also was Philip. And he was preaching to the Samaritans, and they were actually considered to be lower than the dogs. They called them dogs, the Samaritans. And Jesus, if you read the book of John, he went, chapter 4, he went out of his way. He says, usually the Jews would go around Samaria... They would not go through Samaria because they're the hated Samaritans. Jesus said, I have to go to Samaria. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. 
there was a woman there that needed to hear the gospel. And there was a town there that needed to hear the gospel. And God used the woman who not only had one or two, three, four husbands. Jesus said, you have five husbands. And the one you have now isn't even your husband. And this woman is going, how does he know that? And then he says, how you being a man come and get water from me at the well. And Jesus said, I've got water that you don't even know about. Living water. And then she went and she, it says she went to the city and told them about this man, Jesus, and all the different things. And it says many came to believe in Jesus. And then they said, hey, Jesus, stay with us a couple more days or stay with us. And Jesus stayed with them. And it says many more believed in him after that divine appointment. That's divine appointment. So, Jesus was using Saul. He was using Stephen. He was using Philip. I tell the person next to you, God wants to use you. Wherever you're at, he wants to use you. I must go through Samaria. There's a woman there that needs to come to a believing faith. And so, part of that story in John 4 was that, is this the long-awaited Messiah that we were waiting for? That we were looking for? Seven years later, I wonder if that Samaritan woman and those that put their faith in Christ seven years before were there hearing Philip preach again. I'm sure they were. They were hearing the gospel again and they were seeing the miracles. And it says in verse 7, oh, verse 6, it says, The multitudes with one accord were giving attention to what was said by Philip as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. For in the case of many who had unclean spirits, unclean spirits, man, demons, they were coming out of them, and they were shouting with a loud voice. You know, it says in the Bible that even the demons believe and they tremble. They don't have a saving faith, but they know who Jesus is because he created all the angels. And it says that one-third of them fell, you know, and followed Satan. There's demonic activity. I just hate Halloween. I hate it. You know, that the world has made such a big deal about Halloween. And it's the time that all these... Horrible movies come out. Amen. And people take their little kids to watch these things. Right. You wonder why there's mental health issues and people are going crazy. Kids are going crazy. Amen. They're seeing these really terrible movies on TV and, and on in the theaters. God is not a God of fear. So why do we go to these movies to get afraid? <laughs> He's not a God of fear, but of might, power, and what? A sound mind. I mean, I'm kind of glad that the thing's going on in Long Beach because all those scary costumes are in Long Beach in the ports. They can't get them out to the stores. They're going with what they have already in the stores. But, I mean, there's some really wicked costumes that, that kids wear. I, ugh, made in China. So, in the case of many who had unclean spirits were coming out of them. And then those who had been paralyzed. Remember, Jesus here healed the paralyzed man. 
And the lame were healed. He healed the lame. And now Philip is doing the same thing. I mean, it's amazing as these people are seeing the miracles that are taking place. Wherever the gospel was preached and received, and miracles were taking place. The good news. The gospel is simply the good news. One beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And Jesus is the bread of life. Yes, he is. Praise his name. You know, people today, you know, well, how much does this food cost me? It's free. Amen. Well, I don't have to give a donation? No, it's free. We just want to bless you with this in the yes. name of Jesus. Jesus and they're Amen. like, yeah. it's free? Yeah, it's free. Glory to God. Acts chapter 8, verse 8. And there was much rejoicing in the city. There was much rejoicing. You know, happiness, spiritual happiness is not based on, on uh, how many trials or how much money you have or what are your circumstances are. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. And we can have joy and we can have peace even in the midst of everything. I mean, I, they saw the this glow came from Stephen as they were stoning him. He had God's peace as they were killing him, as they were stoning him. I think there's another verse on your outline there. Romans chapter 8. Is there another verse there? Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Here's these people getting delivered from their sins, recognizing Jesus as their Messiah, putting their faith and trust in him. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, We sh who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No one. No one. Not shall no. tribulation? No. Man, a lot of people experience tribulation. They think the world is falling apart. Hey, I need drugs. I need alcohol. I need, you know, hey, it's not, life isn't worth living anymore. Who shall separate them from the love of Christ? Tribulation or distress? or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword verse 37 says in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. There's a verse that says, when one sinner repents, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing. I, I imagine they're, rejoice, they're rejoicing around the throne every day, Hallelujah. all day long. Because yes. there's people repenting all over the world. Amen. I mean, it's amazing how God is using persecution and suffering and trials to bring people to him. Glory all over the world. Glory to the, the joy of the Lord, he is, Lord. is our strength. Sandy, uh, you want to stand up right there, really loud? You're sweet.
Friendship evangelism starts right now. Friendship evangelism. Go out and do all the world and preach the gospel. Wherever your home is, wherever your work is, wherever you live, you know, the friends that you come in contact with, the people that, you know, are family members to you, neighbors, tell them about Jesus. Love them to Jesus. Love them to Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the testimony of Stephen, the testimony of Paul, the testimony of Philip, and so many more, Lord, that are reminders to us that every person we come in contact with is a divine appointment. Amen. Lord, the people need to hear about Jesus. How shall they hear? Who shall I send? Isaiah said, send me, Lord. And we would all be able to say, send me, Lord. I'm ready. I'm available. Always be ready to make a defense of the hope that is within you, Peter says. In season and out of season, be ready. People are dying. People are going to hell. And yet, Lord, you want to show them mercy and forgiveness and healing. People need healing. As we said last week, people need forgiveness. They need a fresh start, a new start. And that comes from knowing you Man, if you can give Saul a fresh start, you can give us a fresh start. He will. We thank you. We love you today, tonight. God, may we be instruments of the gospel, instruments of your love. Maybe there's something right now that you have been carrying around with you. You hurt someone, maybe a lack of forgiveness. You haven't really been healed from a relationship, something that happened at work, something that happened with a family member. And tonight, God wants to set you free, give you forgiveness, to restore unto you, Lord, those things in our lives that we need forgiveness for, we need healing for. Man, you, it comes up all the time in your life. You've been wrestling with it. You've been struggling with it. And tonight, Jesus wants to heal you and set you free. Forgetting what lies behind, I press on. Man, if Paul... If he kept going over that thing of Stephen being killed and all the persecution that he did against Christians, we would not have many books of the New Testament. But he realized he was healed and set free and had a new start. So maybe there's someone here tonight, maybe many that, and maybe may, maybe many watching online. One lady came today and she said, "I came because." I've been listening to you online. I go, whoa, had no idea. People watching online, maybe there's many of you that need a, a healing. Many people in hospitals have that attitude of lack of forgiveness, feeling guilty. Those are heads are bowed. If you need a fresh start, a new start, you need to have forgiveness in your heart, just raise your hand right now. Lord, you see those many hands in this place and those that are raising their hand online, Lord. You can re replace what the locusts have eaten, it says. Twofold, threefold, you can replace it, Lord. God, may we be your ambassadors, ambassadors for Jesus Christ. May we be those that send us, Lord, wherever you want us to go.
Whoever you want us to speak to, send us, Lord. Go out into all the world. Preach the gospel. The good news. It's good news. Preach the gospel. <laughs> we asked some people today, how would you find out about us? And many said, well, my friend just called me and said to come to Calvary Chapel of Mesa. I'm going, wow, what a communication system there is. They were called to come to Calvary Chapel of Mesa, get some free food. God, may we call people to repentance, call people to you, Jesus. May we be sojourners in this wicked and perverse generation in which we live, declaring the good news, declaring forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Jesus. You have every person's here, names written in your book of life for eternity. And no one has whiteout blocking them out. They are right there. You started a work. You're not going to leave that work unfinished. Use us for your honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in awe of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. Morning. Morning. I see you in the sun, God. Could have had a different story. Sorry, I could have had a very different story. You came down from heaven to restore me. Forever save my life. Nobody loves me like Jesus. Nobody. Loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. Nobody loves you like you. Nobody loves me like you. We see you in the sunrise every morning. Morning, I see you in the sunrise every morning. It's like a picture that you painted for me. A love letter in the sky. A love letter in the sky. Star. Forever save my life. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing way. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful. Oh, what a song to sing. Oh, what a song to sing. Oh, what a song to sing.
Jesus loves you. Every one of us could have a far different story. Far different story. Saul could have had a far, far, far different story. But God got a hold of his life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I really believe that God's got a hold of every person's life here in this room. God has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. He wants to give you a big bundle of hope and Hallelujah. faith. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Thank Every you. one of us here, a big Praise bundle of hope Praise and faith. His name. Pour it out, Lord Jesus. It doesn't Praise matter. Amen. You can't change the past. You can learn from it and be encouraged that God is still working in your life. And as of right now, at 750, he's given you a fresh new start. Amen. That's why it says, you are a new creature Press on in, the name of Jesus. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great night. <laughs>